nice furniture. I know. It is nice. I know. Oh, my goodness. We must be at the Kimmel Center or something. Ooh la la. <laughs> it's all fancy. It is fancy. And we got Fiji water, okay? No, <laughs> no Dasani. I know. That's, that, that's right. Ooh. The fanciest of waters. They do you right at Black yes. Star. That's what I'm talking about. Because we don't do this on our podcast. No. <laughs> Not at our studio. Uh, hey, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? Welcome to the Michelle Mission. Two men, one podcast. Every black film ever made. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Len, a.k.a. the Bat Tribble. And as always, I am joined here at Black Star Film Festival with my partner. Hey, this is Vincent Williams. And welcome to the... 2023 edition of the Black Star Film Festival. Yes, Black Star yes. on Broad. If you can believe it or not, all of Broad Street is dedicated to Black Star, dedicated to black films. That is quite an achievement. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is a beautiful thing. And we are here today uh, to talk about one of the films that has been screening here at the Black Star Film Festival. It's a very, very cool documentary called The Space Race. It's all about the history of the black astronauts in the, uh, the uh, NASA and in the, the quest for space exploration. And we are proud to be joined by the directors of the space race, Lisa Cortez and Diego Hurtato de Mendoza. Thank you. Yes, yeah, good to have you two. What a wonderful documentary. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Well, you know, Black Star and its mission and the stories they present are in such alignment with the space race. It's like, you know, we're a perfect marriage. Speaking of like a perfect combination and coming together, you, Lisa, um, looking you up, you have your, your background, uh, both of you have backgrounds in documentaries. But your background, your documentary, you did the documentary All In, uh, and you also did the remix. Uh, about the hip hop fashion, which um, makes sense because you're quite a fashionable lady. Let me just say that right now. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And then you, Diego, you have you did like a sports documentary about Cuban boxing, um, and also were a producer on the Redeem team. How did the two of you come together now to want to talk about the history of Black astronauts? I think um, when when these projects started, we soon came to each other, we discovered that we had this shared passion and that about, about you know, this story and these characters, we're both so uh, absolutely in love with them. And, and I think that's really what brought us together. It's the story uh, of the space race. Were you two already friends? Do you already? No, we met through the project, but like immediately started f finishing one another's sentences and talking about how we could take are universal, as we've been taught by the astronauts, don't talk about the world, talk about the universe. Amen. But how we could take our universal approach to storytelling and embracing humanity in, through our work, and it just was super complimentary. Because this is a big story. Yeah. I mean, oh, we're, we start in 1963 and we go to the present. And it's a big, it was a big lift for both of us to make. Now, you said you both had a passion for this subject. Did you always have a passion for, in, in my mind, there, there are basically two subjects, this sort of hidden history of blackness and then just black astronauts themselves. Did you both have a passion for that or? Oh, well, I think I've also, I've always been very intergalactic mm -hmm. in, in my being. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, Come on, right. Philly. Don't be sitting there all, Don't be shy. all sitting tell back it. and tell everything. Right. So, You've been intergalactic. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Do you tell. know, when I was a kid and saw LaBelle, I was like, can LaBelle. I? LaBelle. She about said say, LaBelle. There's right? Afrofuturist root <laughs> At, here in Philadelphia. Exactly. And, and, and so, you know, I think it's interesting because we've been with the astronauts just yesterday and traveling with them to different screenings. Everybody loves an astronaut. That's we walk right, yeah. into the hotel, they don't look at Diego, they don't look at me, and we're quite wonderful to look at. <laughs> They're like, there's an astronaut. And, you know, it's like, right, right, because right. they are the most phenomenal 
people mm -hmm. in the world. They are geniuses. They have gone to a very rarefied place that so few people get to go to. Um, they're fun. Um, they can quote rap lyrics and <laughs> they are very kind and conscious of what they mean right. for our community. Yeah. So, I mean, like, that's an undeniable um, group of people to work with. I love it. Um, one of the, the astronauts, Charles Bolden, in the documentary, he actually talks about how he is um, the first time in space and looking back at the world and he's trying to find all the different countries in Africa and he realizes that he can't find them because he can't see the lines. Because you now finally are able to see the world as it was, you know, as God intended it. There is no line, there is no division of space or race. And I, just that line when he said that, I was like, oh man, that's like really profound. Like we won't get that opportunity. Most of us won't get that opportunity to see the world like that. And you're absolutely right. That was one of the first things that Lisa and I sort of wanted to deal with in the film. It's, that's, that thing you're talking about is described by astronauts as the overview effect. Yeah. The, the overview effect is when you get to see Earth from outside of it and you see it as one, as one thing. And it, you see it as a rock floating through the vastness of a space. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else around it that has life that we know of. And so that was always the intention. It was mixing the lyrical with the realities of Earth. You have these people that have gone out and seen how things could be. They represent the future. They represent a space of possibility. Right. But then they have to land down again and, and deal with reality. And that yeah. was always something that, um, that dichotomy is something that we're really interested in, in, in tackling in the film. Wait, it's funny. We talked a lot about like this new kind of double consciousness. I think, you know, when we were first introduced to the concept of double consciousness, it's, it's thinking about how we as black people are navigating a world where sometimes we have to put another mask on that is different than our true selves. Mm -hmm. I think like, you know, we started talking about how astronauts have a whole nother way of like existing in a spa in space, mm -hmm. in a space that is full of possibility, where people of all different backgrounds and countries have to work together to survive. But then as black astronauts, when they come back to Earth, you know, Mae Jameson's been pulled aside. And, yeah. you know, I'm like, like same old shrimp, mm -hmm. you know, happens. And that's an interesting way to, to navigate both their interiority and also the place of history that they come from and the journey that has happened with the space program to actually have black astronauts. Because as you know, we weren't there in the beginning. No. Right, right. I, th I think speaking of that, you, you talk about double consciousness and, and I thought Frederick Gregory had this wonderful quote about coming up in these white spaces. So he knew how to navigate that. So obviously, as he said, all of these astronauts are so accomplished and have been so many places. But then it seems like there's almost a third level, especially early on, where you have to be this public figure in blackness and, and you have to, you know, be a role model. And, and you know, I think about Ed Dwight and, and how his public persona was crafted. Ed Dwight is really the interesting story and the revelation, at least for me, of yeah. this documentary because, like you mentioned, this documentary starts in the 50s. And for, I don't know about all of you, but for me, here in Philadelphia, you know, as far as blacks in space, it starts with Guy Bluford, which is like... Yes, like Philadelphian. Right, the Philadelphian, like in, in the 80s, I'm, I didn't know that anybody existed before him. But... but not only did they, Ed Dwight dates back to the 50s, to the first round of astronauts and how they did this man dirty um, and, and propped him, put him up on the stage and then basically like just kicked him off. It's, to me, it's like really the revelation of this documentary. Well, he's a political pawn, you know, he yeah. begins his yeah. career in the 50s and is Kennedy's appointee in 1963. I don't know if we can tell any more because we want people to see the film. Spoiler, <laughs> Spoiler alert. 
I, well, I'm just, I mean, yes, he is a political, a political pawn, but I mean, his story is, is moving. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking a, a little bit. But, yeah. Yeah. But it also is as much as it, as I also found it a little bit uh, inspiring in how, despite what happens to him, he picks himself up and actually finds his way to his first love, which was art. And that is what actually becomes the, you know, the, the path for the rest of his life. It's an amazing story. Ed is absolutely amazing. And uh, without revealing the, the first part of his story that you were mentioning in the beginning, um, he became a really renowned sculptor and there's monuments that he's built all throughout the country because he said, he told us at one point in one of the interviews that when he started doing sculpture, he realized that if aliens landed in America that day and they looked around and searched for monuments, they would think that African Americans did not exist. Yeah. And yeah. That they would have not contributed to anything in this country, that everything they would find were sculptures of black, white people and... Uh, white men. And he decided to make that his life's mission, to, uh, to change that narrative and he became a storyteller. And his monuments are all uh, an incredible, wonderful way to tell those stories that were not known. Speaking of stories, he tells a story that really <laughs> tickled Vincent in this yeah. uh, documentary about his uh, relationship with one Chuck Yeager. Yeah. And we're not going to repeat what Chuck Yeager said about him, but it, it involved an expletive, a racial expletive. And, and what's the story around getting that story? Well, um, Ed Dwight Lee lives in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and graciously allowed us to go to his studio where he, there's all of his finished sculptures and new works, and he let us rearrange his studio and put up lights and do all those <laughs> things that filmmakers do. And we're like, don't worry, we took a picture. We're going to put everything back together. <laughs> um, and we spent three glorious days um, with, with Ed. Um, and he, at that point, I think was 88. He's 90 now. Wow. But he's like, and as you know, as you get older, you don't give a flying. Uh. But That's right. Ed's, Ed is all about the truth, you know, which for right, us as right. documentary filmmakers is so exciting because that's what we are also in yeah. pursuit of yeah. in our, our work. And, you know, first we talked about the art and we talked about the light stuff and, you know, the kids and da da da. And I was like, okay, let's go back to the beginning. And, you know, it's, it's so painful to understand that as a political pawn who was placed in the program because they didn't think they could find a black man with the credentials. Of course not. Right, no. right. So, and then it was like, no, we're, you know, come on. We're super, superheroes. We, I got Ed Dwight. Mm -hmm. Ed Dwight is placed in this program, but Chuck Yeager was not told what was happening. Right. And right. so he felt that there were many more qualified white men uh, who should have been in, in taken the place of, of Ed. And mind Ed, you, Ed was just the one black man. So right, it's not like right. he's eating up like nine spots. Yeah. And Ed and was qualified. Like was they didn't just go and grab somebody. He, come on, he's, you know, He's 300%. We're exactly. never just 98%. Yeah. We do 300%. Exactly. And still are put in situations to make us feel like we've done 30%. Right. So he's there in this space and he's put in the silo. And he, you know, they, I, Jaeger, you know, uh, per Ed, who I believe says he tried to ice him. Yep. You know, and, and we, mm -hmm. that psychological yep. torment. Mm hmm. Um, and God bless Ed. He kept going, he kept going until some things happened. Yeah, yeah. It's an amazing, amazing story. I, lo I loved his story. It, and you talk about how he was a superhero uh, in and to himself in that space. And the one thing that I always remember, and you, you read books about this, about how the first astronauts were when they were selected, they became pretty much like rock stars. You know, they went on world tours. All of a sudden they had, you know, coins minted with their faces and things of that nature. And you talk about all of that in the documentary. And 
the moment you see that, <clears throat> and then you, you're hearing about Ed Dwight's story, you're like, oh, of course, they never was going to let him sure, get to sure. that point. He could, you know, they built him up as a pawn, but they were never going to let him be the, the, the face of the program. Well, well, it's that great quote, I think it was H. Rap Brown, who said, you know, they were never, if they're going to have a black astronaut and they're going to lose them. So even at the time, Black people were like, oh, yeah, this is never going to be where, what it's going to be. Which, well, going to space was the least of our needs. Well, I, th I thought it was so wonderful that your, your documentary captures that ambivalence. I, I know just with, with what we've done, we, we uh, talked about Summer of Soul, the documentary Summer of Soul, where there's that fascinating moment where they announce that we've landed on the moon and that mostly black crowd booze because much like you all talk about there was this sentiment that this money could be used for people here and even in the clip that you show from the great space is the place and that conversation between Sun Ra and the kids and they're like you know what is this with space so I, I love that that kind of nuance and texture it, it's also important uh, we talk to a lot of people that always say it's incredible these stories just one generation uh, old. It's literally all the subjects in the story that were the pioneers in space exploration are alive. And mm -hmm. this happened yesterday. And part of the, part of the reason be, uh, for that is that space is a brand new thing. Mm -hmm. These people were the pioneers because before that, no one had gone to space. So they're literally at the forefront, at the frontier of space exploration. And, you know, it was a very difficult time for them to, to do these things. It's funny when you talk about Philadelphia native uh, Guy Bluford, you know, this summer will be the 40th anniversary yeah. of his flight. 40 years is not that long. No, no not at all. Our, life, our lifetime. Yeah, indeed. And, and it, I, I like just, uh, you know, that there is the, the mentioning that despite how long it took us actually to get in space, that black people have always had a relationship with space and with the stars, dating back to, you know, even the days of the slave trade, dating back to Harriet Tubman. Um, the, like, I, I, I appreciated that because that's real. Like, this was, this, sometimes that thinking about the stars was aspirational for us because of the circumstances under which we were, you know, anything but. But um, just to imagine that now we are actually there right. is an amazing thing. Well, I, I think, you know, as we were debunking the issue of who has the right stuff, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's this kind of implicit idea that, you know, the, the crew cut white men, well, that was their place. That, that, right. You know, they're supposed to be right. there. You know, the, our, what we, through our documentation, show is that African peoples have always had a relationship to the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Right, You know, right. it is, it's a scientific and it's spiritual. Yeah. And, you know, we have, in our time know about the Big Dipper and Harriet following it. But we also know that, you know, and, and there's some little hints in our film, like almost Easter eggs. There's an animation in the front um, of, by a South African artist. Yes. Of uh, depiction of like crave drawings and right. looking at the stars. And, you know, we've used the stars as a navigational tool for for eons mm -hmm. and and so even when the greater popular culture did not allow us the 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 place to be there we have always known of our intimate connection sure sure and and speaking of popular culture as two old trekkies you know how much we loved the space that you give to nichelle nichols and her connection to NASA in bringing in that diversity that we talk about? I think lot, lots of the, the, the moments you see in the film, and, and this is one of them, doesn't really come from us. Like one of the ideas we had in the film was we're dealing with some of the best of us. These, are, these astronauts are overqualified yeah. for everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Multi-hyphenate, they all have achieved in their life the equivalent of four careers. They're all, you know, Engineers, engineers and they're astronauts and they'll tell you like 
that's not the best thing I've done. Or that doesn't define me. Right. Like for us, it's right. mind blowing because you think astronaut is the coolest thing you can do. For them, it's maybe one of the things they've done. Mm -hmm. And so, we 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 very early on in the project decided that this was a story where we needed to listen to them and and let them give them a platform, but let them tell their own story. Yeah. And you know, yeah. for years we think we know the story of space exploration, but how about we listen to them? And then in listening to them, they took us to all these wonderful places. So you have, you know, uh, Fred Gregory yeah. told us that <laughs> anecdote, and he was directly impacted by that. So Nichelle Nichols was recruited by NASA, and, and she helped, uh, you know, recruit minorities into the space program because NASA had zero credibility in the minority community. Yeah. And so she became the spokesperson and went out trying to find, you know, African-American astronauts. And the good thing is that Fred tells you that he saw that, you know, video with Nichelle Nichols telling people that I need you and I need you. And he thought, okay, she's talking, she's talking to, to me. me. Yeah. She's talking <laughs> to me. Yeah. That's yeah, a wonderful yeah. thing. And I love, I, the reason why I especially love that, not only because of our love of Nichelle Nichols, but because that was a black man saying that that was a black woman talking to him and that inspired him to go to space. And that is that you don't hear of and That's I really true. appreciated that because even as someone who knew a bit about Nichelle Nichols and her connection to NASA you always hear Mae Jameson talking about it right you know to right. your point you never hear the men say it mm -hmm. so that is a good good thing the other thing that you, this documentary does in bringing up Fred Mercury I mean um uh no no Fred Gregory Fred Gregory and Guy Bluford and Ronald McNair as the first three kind of right, like chosen right, right, to, to, to see who's going to be the, the, the first one to make it. it. This documentary shines a light on Ronald McNair, who unfortunately we did lose in the Challenger um, uh, tragedy. But the second you see Ronald McNair on screen, because like Guy Bluford, we know him. He's like straight laced, you know, Afro, little part, you know, smooth face Fred light skin no hair Ron McNair <laughs> is on stage sunglasses mutton chops afro like, <laughs> like why is the saxophone player from Mandrill on here <laughs> right, I'm, I'm telling you and then you find out like you've got Images of him running on the beach and he's looking like Jim Brown out on the beach and he plays the saxophone and he's just a renaissance man. MIT. A and he's the smartest one in the room. I'm like, yo, this is a different type of brother. I could tell he was on a different type of swag and just um, reintroduced to him in this documentary. I was like, yo, I need to be in the Ronald McNair club. And, and yeah. by, by reintroduced, I think... For me, this was the first time I got Ron McNair outside of the tragedy mm -hmm. as exactly. one of the seven, you know, as this living, breathing person. He becomes a, a real human yeah, now, and, I, and not I just a line. I appreciated that so much, just as a viewer. Well, we were driving, you know, everybody to the importance of this seminal event in 1983. Right. And these three gentlemen who come into the class in 78 and... You know, their journey, knowing that one of them is going to be the first to fly. But, with, you know, with Ron, we do some subtle things. We give him, like, a great theme song. You know, the mm -hmm. bass drops. Uh, oh, yeah. And then Ron comes out, and you see the big flare. Oh, y'all got mad needle drops in this joint. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Groove Line is one of my favorites. But, uh, yeah, but, but also, like, the music is definitely giving you a sense of place mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. aspiration yeah. and and drive but you know Ron is not only important because he's in this inaugural group but because of his relationship to Charlie Bolden oh, inspiring yeah. Charlie and what this film shows is this community yeah because that you know is a part of the journey of the younger astronauts discovering mm -hmm. you know whose shoulders they stand upon and certainly Ed and Ron are incredibly important um, to all of them. It's, you know, I mean, like, we were with them last night, and Victor Glover, who's going to be going to the moon, was yeah, here. Yeah. And he goes up to Ed, Dwight, and he hugs him, and he sa tells him how much he loves him. You know, and it, it's, it's not, it, it, it's, it's 
the family that the Afronauts, they call themselves the Afronauts, have created. And, and um, that kind of black love is really powerful. Yeah. Especially when it's in space. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Victor Glover, I was so fascinated by the moment where he has the picture of George Floyd in space and just going from Chuck Yeager and everything you sort of think about the military and you think it's probably fairly conservative, just generally. I wondered how, how that went over, basically. I don't know. We were interviewing him, and I think we, it was a very emotional interview. Um, and as we looked at legacy and we looked at conditions that we still have to contend with mm -hmm. here on Earth, mm -hmm. he shared that with us. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was like, oh, wait, I, I can't show anything until um, later because he, I think he's donating the, the, the photo, the, the painting to the Smithsonian. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, but, but by the time we finished the film, it was okay. Uh, okay. But he, right. Come on, say, I did see the picture. But I, I, you know, I think when we hear what astronauts bring with them, you know, Ron McNair brought what was near and dear to him, his saxophone. You know, Victor brought his Bible. He brought mm. pictures of his kids and he brought, brought a, a, a painting of George Floyd. George Floyd. Because he, he, he was on the space station for six months. I mean, like, that was what was near and dear and what was keeping him grounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes, makes sense. It's a, um, it really is a great documentary, The Space Race. Um, how, you talked about, you know, how long this took. And, you know, Black Star is all about the, the chronicling and the making of film, getting into fil filmmaking. How long of a, a project was this? And was this your original thesis when you had the idea for this? Well, it had a different start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the film started completely differently. The, the film started in Cuba. And so, okay, that's right. That's right. right. Okay. Could we go there. Yeah, and um, as we're going through the National Film Archives of Cuba for a different project, going through film in the 1980s, there were all these boxers and all these things, and next thing you see is a black astronaut in the footage, and <laughs> right. it made it made absolutely no sense because why would the Cubans at the time promote anything American on you know on their newsreel? So right. it was very confusing, and then started asking around everyone, what 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 is this? And they said, oh, of course, it's our national heroes. The Cuban cosmonaut, the first, you know, Afro-descendant to fly in space. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> He's like, what, what, what? What? And then first Latino to fly in space, first person, you know, Spanish speaker to fly in yeah. space. And we started asking around and, and, and discovered that his story was not known outside of Cuba. And immediately we're drawn towards that. That's a story that we needed to tell. The, the world needed to know this very incredible story. And so next we met Ed... And, we, and he had heard of Tamayo from way back. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, and Ed, you know, is really, really funny. And he would say, you know, when I first discovered the story of Tamayo and the Soviets had the first person of color in space and they beat the U.S. at that, um, I didn't make the connection, but then I realized Cuba was sort of a satellite of the Soviet Union and so the mm. Soviets scored that point in the space race yeah. in flying, you know, the first person of color. And, and he said, and the Soviet Union had no black people. And so the next question for us was, what was happening in the U.S. Right, that, right, to lose that right, right. right? What the hell was happening here? And that's when we started pulling the thread of, you know, how could it be that the U.S. lost that race when the, when the other guys didn't have any black Didn't people? even have anybody there. Wow. Yeah. They completely shifted. Mm. Well, well, between, um, you know, Arnaldo and, and, you know, we've been talking ab about um, Ed, Ed Dwight and then poor Robert Lawrence, who, who died. It is fascinating how there's almost this part in the pun, shadow history that's been going on for years that, you know, now we know about. Well, it, one of our participants um, said when we approached them, I will only do this if you talk about Robert Bob Lawrence. Hmm. Um, that's, you know, because this this community is so connected. They're always looking out for one another. And they're like, if you're gonna step into this, you, we have to make certain that his story is told. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And be, because he's once again a hidden figure due to the secretive nature of the mole program. Um, and um, so it was, you know, I think to celebrate Bob Lawrence, to celebrate um, Ron McNair, um, is, is something that was not only important to us, but also to all of our participants. This, this group, I keep wanting to say fraternity, but it's a fraternity and a sorority. Fellowship. 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 Uh, peopleship of a astronauts. Like, they are so connected and, as I've mentioned earlier, aware of the importance of what they do. Like, we have screenings, and we get seven and eight year old kids, black kids, who show up. Mm -hmm. who want to be astronauts. And you would think that, like, they don't care about Diego and I, but they're like, they just want to touch Leland. They want to, you know, talk to Victor. Um, it, it's, it's so transformative. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, that's why we do these things, is to uh, connect and inspire and, um, you know, break down systems that tell us that we can't. It's, and it was kind of cool. There's another moment in the docu documentary where that comes together, um, they actually start to reach out to one another uh, and kind of like form this, this, this peopleship a as you were. And I think that it's very interesting that throughout all the history and the things that they have gone through together, that it is the younger people, you know, right, reaching right. back to, in history, to make that connection because the, the older ones, probably because of just how time is, they're probably a little more isolated, their moments in the sun. Whereas, you know, with Victor and then also with Jessica, the, you know, they're there at the same time. They're kind of like rooting for one another, lifting each other up. Um, they, they're used to seeing a little bit more of us there, even if it's not many, but you're still seeing a little bit more. And I like how they're the ones that kind of like start building up that. It's a really cool moment when Victor uh, is on his... Can't, can't, no, no, oh. no, spoiler. <laughs> it's a really cool moment, though. <laughs> uh, it's a good moment, though. Uh, I'll say this. There, there's a moment in the film where um, Charlie Bolden, former NASA administrator, says that the most important thing is not to have a first to have a first black astronaut, yeah. is to have yeah. a second, a third, a fourth. And I think it, it relates to what you were saying, because the first ones were the absolute pioneers. No one before them had done it. They had to go at it yeah. alone yeah. and yeah. without any oh, reference yeah. of anyone else. Nowadays, I think the younger astronauts benefit from that you know, history. And mm -hmm. so they're, it, it, you feel that for them it's really important to connect with that legacy and bring everyone together. Use the, the knowledge that's been gathered by the others and, and put it all together, pull those um, things together and bring everyone closer. So that's why you see Victor and the, and the younger astronauts do that. Beautiful, beautiful. Go. Well, now I'm scared. I don't know what to say and not <laughs> say. <laughs> no, like, like, I'm not even looking at the audience one more because there was one lady who was giving me the eye like this. Right. Like, so I'm just <laughs> right here with you, dog. So now I'm sitting here having like an existential crisis. Like, did I say too much? Should I not have no. talked about Chuck Yeager? Like, we talked about Chuck Yeager before. Did you see Barbie? Yeah. No, 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 no. We, talking about the, the, the astronauts being, being an in, inspirational to the kids. I think they're inspirational to a lot of us. You, you know, again, I, I have to say, I didn't know a lot of the names, even the younger names. And these are names that we should know because this is still an amazing thing. Absolutely. And here's what's great. You know, this film was uh, made with National Geographic Films. They don't do a lot of docs, and we were very lucky that they saw the, the value of, our, of this history. Um, we have a long runway to take this film out into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing festivals through the fall, and at the top of next year, the film will come out, not only on Nat Geo, but on Disney Plus around the world. We're trying to get it on, uh, to be shown on the, the, the shuttle. Yeah, <laughs> oh, really? You know, the, to see if it could be on the space station. But, um, and we're also creating a curriculum. I mean, like, 
it is nice. important that whether you get Disney Plus or not, that we're getting this to schools, we're having great conversations, um, we're working with NASA, um, and that the engagement uh, and exposure of the film is, is very solid. Yeah. Well, I, it, it absolutely is. Someone mentioned Hidden Figures, which so much of that history with black people and our participation in the space program, we've learned from hidden figures. And this is a, you know, just a natural connection to that. So I can see putting it all together. They can have a double feature on the, uh, out in space. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll add this, even the astronauts that have watched the film, and they're the participants, it's their stories, and they still say, they tell us, that they're discovering so many things about their own history they didn't know. And that's kind of mind-blowing for me. And they tell you, because our story was not told. They don't know about it. It was wow. never written, never shown anywhere. So they're, I think, you know, America is at a time when it's really hungry for those stories, for, for filling in those gaps that were omitted, erased, yes. um, and, and, and learn the truth of, you know, what this country is. And for them, it was as shocking as it is for you or for us. Oh, my God. Well, that's the space race, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what else I'm allowed to say about oh, it. come on. <laughs> you want to talk about Afrofuturism? Yeah. Come on now. There's well, I, I, love, I love that y'all, you definitely make the connection with Afrofuturism. Yeah, absolutely. For me, this was actually rare footage of Octavia Butler. How about uh, that? In this film. Um, it's great. You do like a, almost like a slideshow of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, y'all need to, y'all working on a curriculum, y'all need to drop the soundtrack to this joint someplace, because I will grab it up in a heartbeat. It, everything. It was like on point. Top yeah, notch. and we, we worked with great composers, uh, Yonique Bontemp and Anna Drubik, um, and uh, they really understood, like, we wanted a score that it was like Americana, but through a soulful lens. Yes. And um, through the strings, through their orchestration. I mean, it's funny because Yonique, um, he was a composer for the most recent uh, Transformers film. Mm, okay. Um, Rise of the Beast. Yes, and we, but we got him for this one, and and so, and uh, his collaboration with Anna was really fantastic uh, to give us something that had a lot of emotionality. It has a sense of history, um, and to complement you know some of the great needle drops that you know and we've got. Isaac Anna, Hayes. Anna is Russian, so talk about a diverse crew. Wow, a diverse really? Diverse team. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, man! Look, I need to get with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think. Uh, you know, the black connection to the cosmos, the uh, Afrofuturism, like that's all a part of who we are. That's, our, mm -hmm. that's in our DNA. So it was quite organic to make certain that as we give voice to our participants, we are also providing a framework of what they are drawing upon, whether it's known or not. Those are the things that I think subconsciously are always ordering our steps. Particularly, and then if you become an astronaut, your steps are even more, mm -hmm. you know, ordered and complicated as you float through the great void. Uh, um, last question, at least from me, is that I find that more so with documentaries, with filmmakers, it it's becomes like a personal thing because documentaries take so long of... To, to put together. Um, and I wonder, because of that, and because you lived with this project so long, did you walk away with it with any particular tangible takeaway from this project? As difficult as it is to be a filmmaker, I have a production company, I'm out there trying to shop and sell things all the time, and I hear a lot of no's, mm -hmm. and I can oftentimes become incredibly discouraged and think about leaning into my bar barista skills, because I've got good barista skills, <laughs> very important. Oh, I am oh. hanging all day with you. <laughs> We're there, and my mixology skills, too. But, you know, despite whatever discouragement we face, in this industry in trying to 
expand our place at the table, to own a portion of the table. Mm -hmm. um, I have to think back about Ed Dwight, what he went through, how he turned what could have been a very tragic moment into something that, as a storyteller, he then has been able to affect and connect uh, and change the minds and hearts, I would want to believe, of many people. Um, I would say that, um, you know, from the very beginning, I always imagined this, this person flying in a capsule around the Earth and yeah. looking down out of the window. And if you look on one side of the shuttle, you would see the blackness of space, nothing, the unknown. But if you go to the other side of the shuttle and look out of the other window, you see all of humankind all down there. And I just wonder, like, what is he thinking at that moment? You know, in that precise moment, looking at that, what's going through the mind of that astronaut? Mm -hmm. And after having completed the film, I think we, we, we all collectively look at astronauts as, you know, an ideal. It's this sort of almost abstract thing yeah. where we project a lot of our, our own ideas of what you know, things should be. And, and then I think that the more we learn about them, I think that journey into the unknown, the risk they take to explore the universe, to take us you know, where no one has ever gone and discover those things for the betterment of all mankind or humankind. Sorry, uh, Leland would slap my hand. Humankind. <laughs> Um, it's also as interesting when you look at their personal stories. Mm -hmm. They've also gone above and beyond in their lives, in their personal lives. And I think that's the one thing I, I've really discovered in this project, how these men and women of the space program have done so much for this country and for this world and how they've raised above all kinds of obstacles and you know, shown us that we can be way more than sometimes we're led to believe. And that's what you learn from them. It's the possibilities are infinite and they're, they're the proof of that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lisa, yeah. Diego. Yes. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Black Star Film Festival, the Kimmel's Center. Thank you, all of you. Who, um, if you want to check out Vince and I, uh, the Michaud Mission, M-I-C-H-E-A-U-X-M-I-S-S-I-O-N. We are available on YouTube. We stream live every Tuesday night. We are reviewing a different black film every single week. That's what we do. We rock out with black films. And check us out on all your social media. And um, I guess, as always in parting, I'm Len, he's Vince. And as always, we say, we'll see you when it's time to meet again. Take care. <laughs>